Yeah, 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 yeah,
and they, were, they had some empty seats, and they were wondering if we had any students that might be interested. And that got us thinking, hey, you know, we have a great auto tech program, we have great business programs, we have great uh, uh, marketing and accounting and uh, welding and all kinds of things, but we sometimes have seats available too. So how can we kind of meet in the middle? So we started talking about what it would look like for us to send students to each school. For, in other words, for Midland or Dow High students to be able to go to Coleman or Bullet Creek, uh, for Meridian and Coleman Bullet Creek students to be able to come here. And so we started to talk about what that might look like and we ended up, it took a little while, but we came up with an agreement that involved all the schools, all the public school districts in Midland County. Uh, so Midland, uh, which involves both of our high schools, Bullet Creek, Coleman, Meridian, and then over the years, we've added a couple local educational entities that are not traditional school districts. So uh, Windover and uh, GMCA, which is the Greater Michigan Construction Academy, they're all involved in the program as well. So uh, what does it look like? In order to collaborate, we had to do a number of different things. Uh, we all had to get together and figure out, you know, we all wanted to do this, so how do we do it, right? So we had to work on some details. We're the only district that started at 7.40 in the morning for the high schools. The other districts started later, but everyone agreed that they would run their CTE programs first and second hour, and that they would start at 7.40. The advantage here being that students could go to those classes and then come back to their home high school and then still be able to go through the rest of their schedule. So here at Midland and Dow High, it involves typically students taking classes first and second hour at one of those other schools, and then fourth through seventh hour or fourth through sixth hour back here at their school. Every once in a while, we can get a Dow High student where they can get into a third hour class a few minutes late and that works out too. But anyways, the, those are all details. But the, the basics of it is all the schools in the county agreed to start the CT classes at 740. Uh, run those classes first and second hour so that the students could be there. Uh, we agreed to hold spots for countywide students. So when we're filling up our sections, we hold a few spots in our auto tech classes. We hold a few spots uh, in our business classes and so on and so forth. And likewise, Coleman holds a few students in agri-science and so on. Uh, each district is, is involved in the transportation somehow. Initially, it was just us and Coleman that ran a bus. We run a bus from Midland High north up to Coleman and Coleman runs a bus uh, from there back down towards Midland High with stops along the way. And then at the end of second hour, the buses run back the other way. So students do not need their own transportation uh, to be a part of the program. We want to remove that barrier. And then we have to work on calendar communication because we have some common breaks, but we also have half days and whole days off that don't all line up. So uh, we facilitate that communication between the schools. That also involves communication about grades and attendance and all those details, but they're important details uh, that we take care of. And what I didn't put up here, there's one more thing and that just involves uh, money. You know, it's a tuition-based program. Uh, all the districts receive a slightly different stipend from the state of Michigan for students but we have a common rate, we essentially pay tuition. Uh, so for whatever it's worth, we pay about 1,100 bucks an hour a school year, uh, which is about one-sixth of our state aid because it's one-sixth of a student's schedule. Um, so that's what we do. So when we send a student up to Coleman, we send $2,200 because it's a two-hour class. They send a student down here for auto tech for the lab, uh, they send 2,200 bucks here. So we all agree that that's the way we do it. And that's all gone really well. It involves a little bit of extra paperwork, but everybody seems to handle it just fine. In fact, I just walked away from my office this morning with a couple of the bills uh, that we're getting ready to send out to the districts for the students that got coming here. So, All right, so that's all the really boring stuff, but it was really important because we wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. So let's get more interesting. If you want to go ahead, Julia. Uh, so Julia, why don't you come on up here? So this is Julia Sanderson, and I got to tell you, uh, Julia and I have only met, I think, once before, but I've, I've been following her career in agri-science for the last couple of years, and she's a real rock star. So. Um, she's a Dow High senior and uh, she's been involved in the agri-science program at Coleman. This is her third year now. And uh, when I was thinking about this presentation, I just thought Julia is a great example of a student who's taken full advantage of this countywide collaboration and it's really opened some really exciting doors for her. So she's going to take about five minutes and run through some of the things that she's been doing. If you can go right up and talk about what we did this weekend too, that'd be great. So, okay. all right. Julia, I'm sorry. Here. Why don't you clip it on your uh, collar there? Uh, yep. Then you just hold on to that. Okay. We're recording for the website too. Sorry. Okay. It was 
something that like I really wanted to do and I knew my what I wanted to do during high school so I signed up as a sophomore so as a first year I went to the class in Coleman every single day so in the morning the bus leaves around 720 so it's not too bad like I got up like 10 minutes earlier than I normally do and I came here and I rode the bus every day to and from Coleman um, so during our first year we do a lot of we actually don't do a lot of like paperwork as a traditional classroom would. She goes over some notes like Miss Swimmer or it's now Mr. Fisher is the new Ag Advisor. Um, they go over some paperwork and then we do labs that demonstrate what we learned. Um, and one lab that we do is the broiler contest for FFA. So like that's a statewide contest. So all the chapters in Michigan do it and you get chickens from when they're like little babies. And then you and your groups, you um, figure out how you want to raise the chickens, what food you want to give them to try to get them as big as possible and ready for um, sale. So that's, you go through a whole scientific experiment and it lasts the whole first semester, like you sell them at like Christmas break and you sell them to local community members so it's a way to get the community involved in like also experiment you're doing. Another thing we do is portfolio development. So for first year um, in FFA you can do career development events. So that's also a statewide thing. Um, and one of the big things that we do is job interview contests. So um, that's what I did, and you compete within your own chapter, and the top two from each chapter goes to a regional event, and then they compete with other chapters in the region, and if they place well, they go to districts, and the districts on to states. Um, so with the portfolio development, you make a resume, and you make a cover letter, and you learn how to like talk to people, and the people from the community come in and give you um, lessons on like what an employer is looking for, so it helps you get employed. And another thing you learn is greenhouse management and livestock production and management. So we have our own greenhouse at Coleman, which is really cool. So the first year kids, um, they get to plant the plants and they get to take care of their plants. So each group is like given a section of the greenhouse and say, these are your plants. So you have to take care of them. You have to water them every morning and night. And then you c even come out on the weekends and you um, water them and then you sell them on Mother's Day. So it's like a fundraiser for the chapter and like it's also giving back to the community. And then for production management, we get hogs and dairy feeders in the barn. And then this year, I believe we're getting breeding lambs and um, some other ewes to keep in the barn. And so students can learn uh, more about breeding and genetics with the animals as well. Um, and then with the food science, we, do, we go through how to, um, we call it fork to plate, or not fork to plate, farm to plate. Um, and then you start with the farm and you go through all the process that the food goes through and how it gets to your house. So it goes through like the regulations that the USDA has and like how meat um, is processed and stuff and it shows you like all the different stuff. And then we go through the natural resources as well. So like the comedies that Michigan makes. So um, a couple of months ago we went to uh, the sugar factory in Bay City and we got to learn how sugar is made which is a big agricultural commodity um, locally and then for second year what we did was we all everyone gets their OSHA 10 certificate so you're OSHA certified and then you get an ICEV certification which is something that you get to pick so I chose um, livestock judging so after this year because this is new um, after this year I'll be a certified livestock judge so like when I go on to college and there's local um, livestock shows I could apply to be a judge and they could hire me based on like my qualifications and stuff so that's really cool so that gets you prepared to go out into the workforce um, and then work experience another part of the second year thing is you only go to class Mondays and Fridays and then Tuesday Wednesday Thursday you're like co-oping so you actually go and work somewhere so last year I worked at a flower shop so that was really cool I got to learn about like um, Midland actually has a big flower commodity which is something I did not know so I learned a lot about like um, flower sales and like the business aspect of it as well and then another thing you do in your second year is you apply for the Michigan FFA state degree so that gets you six credits to MSU for earning that and you can apply for proficiency awards which I'm applying for beef proficiency because I have my own cattle and stuff. So that's just extra awards that you get from Michigan FFA and that's like the highest award you can receive from the program. And then as a third year, which is new this year, well, besides like me being the guinea pig, there's um, <laughs> the <laughs> this year there are sophomores. So when they get to seniors, they'll dual enroll with um, MSU's two-year um, ag tech program. 
So they, there's, they can take classes that you would take as a freshman at MSU and they can take, and most of these are free, so you get like a bunch of free credits to MSU. So if you decide to go to MSU, it's a lot cheaper than if you started out as a freshman. Um, but I chose the Arthur Berkey Science Fair option. So what I'm doing for my project is um, I'm working with two doctors from MSU and we're doing a genetic research project on beef genetics. So I'll be running a program um, with the Angus Association on, for my specific one, is tracking yearling weight through different breeding types. And um, it's something that I want to go into, like that's what I want to be, is like a beef geneticist. So it's really helping me get my foot in the door with like places that I could study at, like MSU. And I get um, credits there, and the doctors there have signed me up in their genetics class. So I'm technically taking a college class while still doing the science fair. And then the um, science fair is at the Michigan State um, FFA convention. So if you place well enough there, then you'll go to national convention in Indianapolis the next upcoming October. Okay, the next slide. Um, so some things through agroscience is like the FFA participation, which this is my favorite part about it. Like I love being an FFA. So if you're in the class, you're enrolled in the chapter. And then things you can do is you can be a chapter or a regional officer. So I'm the president. Um, as a sophomore, I came in and they were missing a couple um, officer positions. So I started out as the reporter and then I worked my way up to president for my senior year. And then I decided I don't want to go to school in state, but if I were staying in state, I would go for a regional officer position. So that way you look over um, six or seven chapters locally. And it's just like a really good way to like um, get in programming and like you meet a bunch of people through FFA. Um, so another thing you can do is like proficiency awards, how I talked about, but you also receive degrees. So one degree you get for your first year in um, at Coleman is you get your green hand degree, which is like you're in the chapter, you're, doing, you're participating, you're doing a good job. And then you can get your outstanding junior, which is um, at the state level. So you go to MSU in the spring and you get to walk across stage and you get a little button. And then the next is the state. So that's for seniors. They can get um, MSU credit through that. And then the top degree is the American degree, which follows you into college. Actually, you apply for it your freshman year of college. And then um, it's based on what you did through your FFA involvement in high school. And then another thing is the skills competition, how I talked about the job interview. Um, that's one I did and I made it to, um, I made it past regional, so I made it to districts. And that was so cool. I met so many people through that, like I didn't know. And then it's not like a, it's a competition, so like you want to win. But everyone there is so nice and like they give you tips, even in the waiting room. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. And they were like, if you do this, like it helps with you. And it was just really cool because it wasn't like other sports teams that I've played on. I've noticed that like your other teams are not going to help you with what you want. <laughs> but at FFA, like everyone was so nice and like they just really want to help you. Um, and then there's other opportunities you can attend. So state convention in the spring, we go down there for three days. It's at MSU. Um, and then the state leadership conference. Um, I went to that and it's for chapter officers and you get to talk to um, every officer in the state actually if they attend. And then you go through um, little workshops on like how to improve yourself as a leader and like how to improve leadership within your um, chapter as well. So through the um, AGS program you get a lot of credits actually. So it counts for chemistry, a fourth year science, and math. So um, you don't have to take if you take um, ag, then you don't have to take like other classes instead of it. So it's like, um, because it is a two hour class, you don't have to catch up with other classes. So you wouldn't have to take a seventh hour if you didn't want to. Um, and as long as you complete the two years, you get six plus credits to MSU and then 23 to Davenport. So that gets you mainly through like the first um, two semesters of your freshman year at Davenport. Um, and then the completion of dual enrollment through Delta, because you would be doing um, more classes at Delta, you would get more credits to MSU because Delta and MSU are linked right now through that Ag Talk Tech program. So it's the same classes at MSU are being taught at Delta. So they're the same, like the, the credits will transfer very easily. Um, and then you get educational tra training and certificates so like the ICEV and the OSHA 10 certificate. And then you get a lot of scholarship opportunities. Like there's one specifically like just for our chapter that's like 1500 a year and then one 
from Monsanto that you can apply to that's for only Michigan kids is 10,000 and then they give out smaller ones and then through FFA like you apply and they give you so many scholarships just for being in FFA so it's it's been really good to me so like this um, weekend actually I flew to Texas A&M so I toured Texas A&M in their meat science lab and I talked to some of the professors and stuff and then I drove to Oklahoma State and then I was talking to them and stuff. Oklahoma State actually offered me um, in-state tuition and a $12,000 scholarship because of like my participation in FFA and like they saw that I was really interested in genetics and they got new genetic professors so they were really excited about that. And then um, even at Texas A&M they saw that like FFA involvement is really big down there but if you can like um, really get your foot in the door and like do something special with your FFA experience like they want you there like one of the professors offered me a spot in his barbecue class actually is <laughs> <laughs> one of the specialties they have there thank you Julia does anybody have questions for Julia all right well, yeah, let's give her a round of applause yeah. thank you we can go back to Mrs. Royalty there Is that good? All right, so, you know, as you can see, uh, I mean, you can see why I asked Julia to be here, right? I mean, she's doing great things, and we're very excited about uh, where she's headed. And the Coleman AgriScience program uh, is just a, a great example of one of the things that, through our countywide collaboration, we've been able to open up for our students. And it also is a nice example of what CTE is all about. You know, so you heard her say, in the first year, it was a classroom experience but it was an applied classroom experience. They're in the greenhouse, they're in the barn, they're learning and they're using their knowledge right away uh, in real world applied situations. Her second year was a combination of classroom instruction in the, in the, la in the uh, uh, barn, I was gonna say shop, because we're <laughs> going to the shop next, but in the barn and, 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 and in the greenhouse, but then also a work experience. And then in her third year, um, if you, caught all that, she, she's doing so much, but she's doing a, a genetic study with Michigan State University professors, uh, and, and, just, and it's opening up amazing opportunities for her in her next couple of years. So similar types of things can happen. That's the idea of what a CT program is supposed to look like. So uh, great job, Julia, and keep up the good work. <laughs> so um, I think what we're gonna do right now is have Aaron Royalty go ahead and talk about some of the uh, give you an idea of what's happening in Midland Public Schools with our CTE programs, and then we'll have a chance to head down to the Auto Tech Lab before we come back here to learn a little bit more. All right? Okay. We got passing time going on outside, that's why the... Yes. Yeah, here. Will you be my clicker? All right. So, um, as Scott said before, I'm Erin Royalty. And this is my third year with Midland Public Schools. And prior to this, I had a mini career at Dow Chemical. And I think that's something that makes CTE teachers really valuable and also effective and maybe even a little bit special is that we've all worked within industry. So when we're teaching something in class, um, especially in computer technology, for example, I can tell the students how I use that in the real world um, with very specific examples of what that looked like um, in an office environment, in a corporation. And so for me, I think that just helps me uh, engage them a little bit more, but also prove to them that what they're learning here is valuable. You know, sometimes we get the question of why are we learning this? Um, I never struggle to justify what we're learning in CTE ever. So um, we have several different pathways that we'll talk about. The first being business marketing and management technology. And so um, that pathway is computer technology one, computer technology two, and advanced business. Um, in computer technology one and two, we spend a lot of time looking at Microsoft Office. So Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint. Um, we draft business communications. We spend time putting together resumes, electronic portfolios. Um, in computer technology two, it gets a little more fun. We do some Photoshop and um, green screen technology and so uh, video um, applications and things like that. And then um, for the capstone, students move into advanced business. And this year here at Dow High, we're piloting a program called Virtual Enterprise International. And this is a program that is worldwide. Um, 
and students run a virtual business within the classroom. So starting out this year, we, uh, or the students, um, decided what product they were going to market and sell to the virtual world, and we chose a virtual business name. We just finished our business plan last week, so that will go off to the national office. Um, and then it'll be go time. So we will be marketing our product, which uh, the students decided to do food delivery subscription boxes um, because everybody in the virtual economy of VE has to pay for food and clothing and shelter. They thought having something uh, that was a need rather than a want would be a better uh, selling point for them. So we'll be marketing and selling across the virtual world. As our company makes money, then our accounting department will um, complete our financial statements. They will pay our employees. As our employees are paid, they will have to pay their rent and pay you know, car insurance, um, all of their personal bills. Um, and they don't know this yet, but eventually uh, we'll get, you know, we'll have some little life situation cards. So congratulations, maybe you won uh, the, the lottery this week and you got $500 and oh, I'm sorry, maybe your car broke down this week. So you have to pay out $300 to get it fixed. So. What do you do in those situations? So it's been really fun to have the classroom operate as a business. Um, so every day when they come in, they go to their department. Uh, they got to choose what department they interviewed in and what position they were interested in. Um, we conducted interviews. Actually, the administrators here conducted interviews. Um, and then I placed them based on feedback into departments. And so we have a CEO and a CFO and um, vice presidents of each department. And it's very student driven. So, you know, they might come to me for advice. Uh, maybe they're having a problem with an employee not pulling their weight. So then we talk about, well, what does that look like uh, from maybe a disciplinary perspective? Do they need an employee improvement plan? Um, and what are we going to do with that person to kind of get them going again? Um, so it's been really fun so far, and I think it will continue to be fun. Um, one of the main things we'll do this uh, semester is go to a trade show at Northwood where we will set up our trade show booth and um, hopefully sell to other firms that are there at Northwood as well. Um, the great thing about Computer Tech 1 and 2 is that if you take it at the point three level, you can get Microsoft Office certification. And um, that looks great on a resume. And a student can walk out of here and go to a job interview and be able to show that they have those skills. Um, for a student who needs to work during college or maybe just is going to work out after high school instead of college, um, having certifications like that can be very beneficial. Accounting 1 and 2 uh, is a class we run at both high schools. Um, incidentally, Computer Tech 1 and 2 and Advanced Business run at both high schools as well. Um, currently, the students are working with their online textbook, uh, learning all accounting functions. Um, a little bit later in the semester, they will learn and work with QuickBooks. So very real world. Um, many businesses use QuickBooks, and so having students with knowledge of that is beneficial for them as well. Uh, web design and development and advanced web design and development uh, runs at both schools. Um, students learn Dreamweaver, HTML, CSS. Um, they also learn principles of good design um, and what a uh, user-friendly website looks like and how to create a website that not only engages your user but also um, is easy for them to work with and get the information they need from it. Uh, in advanced web design, um, we pair the students up with maybe a small business in town who needs a website, um, and they work with that client to develop a website for um, that small business. So again, very real world experience, something they can put on their resume and speak, uh, <coughs> speak to um, in an in a interview situation or other situations, giving experience for what they, what they know. Marketing sales uh, and Merchandising and entrepreneurship uh, both run at both, all three of those classes, two of those classes run at both high schools. Uh, marketing and sales and merchandising are classes where we do a lot of hands on projects. Uh, the big project in marketing that they are just gearing up to start in a couple weeks is the Make a Wish project. Students create their own real business, uh, they market and sell a product or a service and all of the proceeds go to the Make a Wish Foundation. Last year I think we donated about $3,000. Um, so a lot of the kids are very motivated um, and typically we try to bring someone in to talk about Make-A-Wish which, wish, which sort of makes it a little bit more real world to them. Um, but they have to learn about 
who their target market is and what's an appropriate price and how they're going to advertise and where they're going to sell. And so as we're learning those concepts, they're applying them to the, pr the project. So um, sort of like what Julia said, it's not a lot of paperwork um, it's in terms of like worksheets and you know assignments out of a textbook, but it's very hands-on in real world. Um, students in sales get to work in the charger shop or Chemic Corner at Midland High. Uh, so again, they're learning how to work with a point of sale system, uh, count back change, um, create displays and advertising to draw customers in. Um, one thing that they kind of deal with every year is meeting the national standards for health criteria and you know being ethical and okay, maybe we could probably sell something that didn't meet that, we might not get caught, but that's not ethical. And so kind of working through those lessons and just making sure that you know, they're following the laws and guidelines, even though sometimes it makes business hard. So uh, engineering, manufacturing, and industrial technology, we're going to head down to Lance's lab here in a little bit. Um, but he uh, teaches car care, auto tech one and two, and those are classes specific to Dow High. And so I won't read all of this to you, but um, you can see there's a lot of things that they learn. Uh, very real world, very hands on. Um, I love it when I, you know, I talked to a student a couple weeks ago, it happens to be a female student, who took car care last year, and I said, oh, gosh, you know, was it, you know, were there other girls? And she said, oh, no, I was the only girl. And I said, oh, okay. And she said, but that's okay, you know, I learned so much. And last month, my car broke down in Saginaw. I had a flat tire, and I just got out and changed my tire and went on my way. And I thought, that's awesome. I couldn't do that. So, um, you know, I just think it's really exciting when the kids are seeing that what they're learning in class is applicable to their daily life. Students who complete all three um, end up with some great certifications where they could step right out into the work world after high school, um, and that's awesome too. Uh, Project Lead the Way is new in the district this year, and uh, the class that we're offering uh, this year is Introduction to Engineering and Design. And I believe you heard from Steve last, uh, a couple weeks ago or last month, and so, um, there is some information in the back, which maybe he shared with you, um, that talks about the, the progress and what classes will be offered in the next coming years. Um, but this year, they're doing lots of 3D modeling. Um, it's very hands-on. I get lots of positive feedback when I ask kids, when I see their project lead the way workbook, and I say, hey, how, you know, what do you think about that? They love it. They love what they're doing. Um, and so for a kid who's engineering-minded and thinks that's the career path they want to follow, this is a great way for them to um, check a yes box or may, maybe I need to rethink my career um, box, but it also gets them experience in that field. So uh, engineering, manufacturing, and industrial technology construction trades. This class is specific to Midland High. Uh, you can see the progression there, introduction to trades, woodworking one and two, and then capstone course being building trades where they actually build a house. Um, and you've probably seen several of the Midland Public Schools building trades houses around the community. Um, again, very hands-on. The students work together to um, come up with that plan and build the home. And they also work with some other contractors that come in and do some of the specialty things for them. So very great experience. Welding technology available at Midland High as well. Um, so they start with hobby and art welding, um, and then you can take welding technology one, two, and three. So very, again, very hands-on preparing these students for possible careers in these fields um, and just giving them some real world experience. Here at Dow High and at Midland High we offer family and consumer sciences um, and so maybe uh, what you previously knew as home ec, right? Um, again, very real world and a lot of kids don't know how to cook a meal or measure um, or maybe uh, they're interested in childcare and they want to be a daycare person or a preschool teacher. This is a great way for them to learn about child development, um, personal living, food and nutrition. I know it's very hands-on. Uh, here at Dow High, Lori Lee spends a lot of time making sure that um, what they're doing in class is applicable to the real world as well as um, interesting for the students. And we have a health science program as well. Um, runs at both schools and uh, first year healthcare technology. They learn a lot of terminology. Um, they learn to take vitals. Healthcare tech two, they you know go further. They dig in further. If a student takes both of those, they then are eligible to co-op at the hospital. 
Um, this year, I think we have mm, 13? Uh, 13 or 14 students. 13 or 14 students at, at the hospital co-oping. Um, and I'm gonna talk about co-op here in a minute, but the first year I went on a co-op visit to the hospital, I thought, oh, these kids will be like pushing people in wheelchairs and they'll deliver meals. Um, they're not doing that at all. They're taking vitals and they're giving patients baths and they're watching people live and die and it's incredible. It's incredible. And they love it. They love every minute of it. The, the stories they tell, um, they're just really getting such a great experience. So co-op in and of itself is a great experience. This year we have uh, over 60 Midland Public School students placed in our community working. Um, I have students placed, I feel like, all over creation. I have somebody out at Oil City Salvage. Um, I have somebody at Countryside Animal Clinic. Of course, we have the kids at the hospital. I have kids at law firms, doctor's offices, veterinarian clinics. Um, and so students work 15 to 24 hours a week. Um, they have to work at least 15 to get their credits. They earn one and a half credits per semester. Um, what's great about this is I get to go and visit all these places and these kids are thriving and their bosses love them and they tell me how great our students are and um, so I just, it's always a positive experience. The kids are getting great um, real world uh, experience. They're learning what it's like to work um, in an office environment or in a business environment um, and just applying a lot of the knowledge that they already have from CTE classes that they have taken um, and then they're building on that and, and developing new skills. A lot of the soft skills that you know, we're not always born with, but you learn over time. So it's been really a great program. Yeah. We have many, oh, go ahead. I thought, is that is Andrea near this part or are you? This is me. Okay, sorry. So we have lots of student organizations. Um, and so, uh, you know, similar to FFA that Julia spoke about, CTE yeah. is about giving students opportunities to be a leader. And so here are some of the many programs that CTE students can get involved with at Midland High and at Dow High. Um, Midland High Business Professionals of America, or BPA, is about 60 members this year, um, and that's fabulous. They compete in business subjects and um, typically compete very well at the district level, state level, and then we usually always end up with kids going uh, to the international level as well. Here at uh, Dow High, we have DECA, we don't have BPA, um, and they have DECA at Midland High as well. Our DECA uh, team this year is 85 members, and so we're gearing up right now to take tests and do our district competition, um, and then states will be in March in Detroit, and then internationals is in, is in Orlando this year. So students have to um, take first or second in their event to move on to the next round. So it's always really exciting. It's a great networking opportunity for these students. It's a great way for them to be in front of a judge and um, think on their feet and just really learn how to be professional and um, poised. So we have many students who are involved in these um, different competitions where they go and they show the skills they've learned in um, welding or construction or woodworking. Um, and they compete in Skills USA or MITES and Buildings Trades Club and Welding Club and they get to show off the things that they know. This is Andrea. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was right there somewhere. Thank you, Aaron. Good job. Excuse me. So uh, before we get on to auto tech, just a couple of things I wanted to clean up from the first part of the presentation. Uh, as uh, you kind of heard from both Julia and Aaron, many of these programs lead to college. They all lead to some form of articulated college credit. So you can students can walk out the door with college credit in their back pocket. Not only does that save them money, you know, they don't have to pay for those classes, but they can move on to the next level of classes right away when they get to college, which is really nice. Um, and I, I don't think I mentioned the, the countywide collaboration. There's a couple of other programs that we send students to the Greater Michigan Construction Academy where they can work towards their journeyman's license. Uh, they can be more than halfway to their journeyman's license in con industrial construction by the time they graduate. And then also uh, we send students over to Windover's culinary program, which as opposed to our foods program, which is more of a home, like a home-based foods program, that's a restaurant-based culinary program, so they can attend that. And we also have students in the educational careers program uh, at Bullet Creek, as it's, it used to be called teacher cadet, but preparing students for careers in education, obviously, so um, some, some pretty exciting opportunities. The, we also provide, uh, for years, we provided transportation within the district 
So if you have a Midland High student that wants to come to Auto Tech here, we provide that transportation. Same thing for Dow High students that want to go in, uh, across town to the welding program. Uh, the building trades program meets later in the day, so that's harder to arrange transportation for. But uh, we've often provided some form of transportation for those students too. So, All right, we're going to head down to the Auto Tech lab so we can see a class in action. Uh, and then we'll come back here to finish up with Andrea uh, Joswick from Midland High School. So we'll head about down, there. down there. Yeah, about Well, good afternoon. How are we doing? My name is uh, Lance Ransom. I've been here about a little over 10 years teaching car care and automotive technology. Um, so where we're standing right now is the classroom portion of the shop. You'll be seeing the shop here shortly. Um, the papers that are going around is the entire program, the breakdown of what students do, um, as far as time-wise, how many semesters, those type of things. So, car care on the left-hand side is going to be our basic. That's our preliminary kind of exploratory class. And as you can see by that list, there's a lot of things that we cover in about 55 minutes every day. Okay? So, this is a one-semester, one-hour class. And obviously, you notice with each one of the classes, we start with safety, because that's huge. Right, once they get done with that, then you can kind of go down the list, and that's basically the structure of the semester from start to finish as far as what they're going to learn. Okay, um, once they're done with this class, if they like it, then they can go into Auto Tech, and there's Auto Tech one and two. I typically have students for, for three years, so it'd be one semester, like their freshman or sophomore year, um, so that, that kind of counts as one year, even though it's one semester. And then I have them for a full year, typically their junior year, and then another full year, their senior year. So that, that's kind of the layout. Um, for, let's say, Auto Tech 1, the areas here would be engine performance, HVAC, and engines, and that's usually first semester, and then brake second semester. And then for the next year, we rotate. So this year, we're actually on electrical, suspension, steering, and trans. So this list looks like a whole lot bigger, right? But this, if I were to list everything that we learned, it would take about three or four or five pages. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of curriculum that we go through, so this is just kind of the, the basic title, I guess you could say. All right. Um, Auto Tech is a full year class. It is a two hour block. Um, and then down at the bottom, we have things like credit articulation. We can articulate roughly 20 credits from here to Delta College. Um, it's the same curriculum um, as college level courses. And that includes like University of Northwestern Ohio. It's, it's all the same curriculum. So we have direct articulation. Um, it's all, also math accredited. So um, like a senior looking for that, that math credit they can get. Um, we also do a car show once a year, and then we also have what's called open lab. And what that is is every other week, the students can work in the shop for the two hour block on their own stuff. Um, whether it be, um, like for example, we're doing electrical right now, they can apply that to their own vehicle, um, or whatever they need to do. We have students doing everything from welding to grinding to, you know, a little bit of everything. So it, it's just that time they can utilize me. Um, as a certified tech and then also the shop for two hours. So I can only do that every other week because we have a tremendous amount of curriculum to do, um, but it kind of helps them take ownership in their own vehicles and the program and what they're learning. So basic structure, car care, we're typically, back to car care, we're basically in the class, oh, maybe a few days to a week, and then we're out in the shop every day for a few days to a week. The nice thing with auto tech is because I have a two hour block, we're in the shop every day. So we take an hour, we learn what we're gonna be doing here, and then we directly apply it in the shop, and that's essentially all day, every day. That's kind of the basic rundown. Does anybody have any questions? I know you guys are on a time crunch, but... How many students do you have this year? In, in each class, yes. um, typically we average, car care is usually bigger, um, low 20s, I've had as many, as many as 30 students, so as, if you can imagine several thousand square foot, five bays wide, I mean, I'm busy, right? There's students everywhere, but that's good. Um, auto tech is generally upper teens. That's about where we, upper teens to very low 20s, that's, that's about where we are. Yep, absolutely, that's pretty common. Yes? I read that you're a member of the United States Navy Reserve. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. Yes, you bet. Yep, thank you. Yep. Thank you. I want to make sure I said that before we got in there. They got <laughs> okay. I appreciate so. that. Yep. Yes? What's the range of careers that the students from here go? Do they all go to college? Do they, what types of jobs do they get if they get out and don't go to college? I have everything from students going working auto parts stores to mechanical engineering to there's there's a huge range of the automotive program in general as far as what they learn what they can do um, I do have automotive technicians diesel technicians a lot of my students will go into welding which we do some in here so it isn't just strictly automotive there's a wide range and another example is 
Um, we have a recruiter coming in from the Michigan Institute of Aviation and Technology. Um, they can take what we learn here because an engine is an engine. They can apply that to planes. To um, We also have Northwood in for the business side as well. Um, so there's a, there's a huge range of what they can do and, and what they have done in the past based on the students I've had. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Great. Yeah. You take a couple minutes and get into the shop. Absolutely. Um, there's going to be a variety of things going on so you can kind of get a taste of what we're doing. So here's our shop, obviously. in the crib on the right hand side so we have the tent every day so they can monitor what's going in and out. Um, we have students working on electrical and circuit boards. Um, our, our new V blaster over here, we have students using that. I have a student on a donated vehicle on the Chevy S10 which is doing some welding. Um, so just a huge variety of what's going on. Going back with it? Okay. Okay. Pretty close. Okay. From what you're seeing here, do you have any questions right out of the gate? Yeah, good question. If you didn't hear that, the question was, where do we get the cars? All the vehicles here are donated. So back in the day when General Motors and Ford, when they were donating new vehicles, we would get them from those manufacturers. That doesn't happen so much anymore. Uh, but uh, thanks to our wonderful community, they're, they're constantly donating different vehicles. So everything that you see um, is essentially our fleet that we have. So um, these are running vehicles, so students can do all their, their labs that relate to what we learn in the classroom on the vehicle. Or a lot of times, if it's curriculum related, students can, can do the lab on their own vehicles as well. Yep. So this is, this is a small case. I have vehicles outside as well, so we have, we have a, quite a fleet. So probably about 12 to 15 cars. Yep. Any other questions? So we are five bays wide and two deep. Um, most of the equipment that you see here is up to date as far as at a dealership level. Um, and, and essentially everything that you see here, the students are going to use. In the three years that I have them, we go through pretty much everything. Um, this area right here, we don't use tech manuals any, anymore. Everything is online, so we have all, all data. Your students can find everything from capacities, wiring diagrams, schematics, that's all here. And because of their Chromebooks, it's kind of handy. They can use their Chromebooks to get on all data, which is online, and then look up anything that they can do in the class. So, yeah. How many minutes now? One? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and take down this way and look around a little bit and then come back. Okay. <laughs> Where do you go? Right. Right. This is fine. So one of the basic things that car care students learn how to do is how to lift a vehicle, because that's absolutely essential. So they'll learn how to do that safely. We have two different types of lifts here. This is a new one as of last year. This is called a short rise lift, the alignment rack, um, uh, floor jacks. They'll learn all that stuff from day one safely, and then we kind of go from there. Uh, I'm going to go over a little bit on time, but it was hard to figure out what to cut. And I certainly didn't want to cut off Julia when she was talking, and I wanted you to see the shop. So, um, as in all of your meetings, you know, we're almost at one o'clock right now. If you need to leave, we understand. We won't take it personally, so go if you got to go. Um, but I do have Andrea Joswick, uh, who is our teacher leader for CTE for Midland High School. You heard from Erin at Dow High School. She's back teaching class now. Andrea was teaching class earlier, and now she came across town so she could talk with you. And Erin gave, or, yeah, Aaron gave you an overview of all the different courses that we offer in CTE, and Andrea's going to talk about some of the opportunities. Uh, beyond the classwork and some of uh, what it leads to, what students are able to walk away from. As you're listening to her, I want you to remember we talk all the time and our governor gave us the, the stewardship of, of, of our students helping to get them college and career ready, right? And there's nowhere that students are more college and career ready uh, than when they walk out of our CTE classes. So Andrea will kind of highlight that a little bit for you. So. Okay, so I'm here to talk a little bit about the CTE program as it relates to articulation and some of our certifications. Um, as a parent, I feel that the articulation aspect is kind of like the biggest bang for your buck. And it's a very well-kept secret here at Midland, in Midland Public Schools because any student who takes our classes um, in, in the CTE area and they earn a B or better, many of our classes have been articulated with Delta College, which means that your student receives 
college credit while they're taking our classes at Midland High School or Dow High School. Um, some students immediately say, well, I'm not going to go to Delta. I'm going to Michigan State or I'm going to CMU. Um, what we do is we have our students actually apply to become Delta students that will generate a Delta student ID. And the way you kind of get around this is that we have our students, we encourage our students to take a one credit class at Delta, which then will generate a transcript. Once they get a transcript, then our articulated credits will go on that transcript. We can't guarantee that the college or university that they go to, that those, college, that those credits will be transferable, but I would rather take that chance as, as a parent, and I'm gonna, my son, um, as well is in one of my, our classes and I'm going to have him take a one credit Delta class in hopes that the CTE articulated credit he's earned will transfer to the college or university he goes to. So that's our articulated credits and that it's, it's in all of our classes, the business, the, um, auto, the automotive, the um, industrial arts classes. Um, the other thing that we offer for CTE is certification. Specifically, I can speak towards the computer technology one and two. Uh, students walk away with an opportunity to become a Microsoft Office specialist in both the areas of Word and Excel. And um, I have all of my students take it, no matter what point level they are, we have them take it. And we're currently at about an 80% success rate where students leave with an actual industry, industrial certification, not just a certificate that Ms. J says you did it. So it's actually from Microsoft. Um, the other certification that I know that we have within the CTE area is um, we have an automotive technology program that itself is certified, but students as well can walk away with certification in the areas of brake, suspension. Um, I'm not really an auto person, so I'm sure there's many other, but they also can walk away with certifications. Um, graduation requirements, one way that we can encourage our students to take uh, CTE classes is we offer um, or we cover or meet graduation requirements in the areas of visual performing and applied arts. Some of our classes will cover that credit as well as a fourth year math related. So for example, I know accounting is a fourth year math related credit. So if you're a senior and you don't want to take a trig, stats, or calculus class, you can take the accounting class and still fulfill your graduation requirement. And that's many of our classes, I know our industrial arts classes as well, have the fourth year math related. Um, one way that we keep students interested in our program is we've started to offer the CTE classes at, a, at different point levels. So we have a combined class, uh, combined classes of students who are working at both, both a point two and a point three level. So the curriculum is taught at a point two level for everybody, and then we increase the rigor um, so they can meet the advanced or the point three standard. And it has helped with enrollment as well. Uh, the best part of being a teacher is hearing the feedback that we get from students. And so I have um, a couple of students and actually parents have said, uh, Jerry, just he's a student at Michigan Tech and he told me that getting his MOS certification, Microsoft Specialist certification, actually helped him secure his first internship through um, Michigan Tech. Um, then Elizabeth, she was a wonderful student, a student that you wouldn't particular when she was sitting in class, you wouldn't think that she would really um, push herself and challenge herself much. And she earned her Microsoft certification as well, but that wasn't the part that was important in the class. Having taken the classes, she said it, she gained confidence, and confidence in her, in her ability just to work with computers and with technology. And she started out working at a physician's office and um, worked her way. She took some college courses, ended up getting a bachelor's degree, I believe it was through CMU, health, um, man, through health management. And she's now training physicians using new software. And so that was one thing she walked away with. And then always at parent-teacher conferences, I hear the story or the comment from parents about our blended learning opportunities that we have available to students. And if you're not, did Erin talk about blended learning at all? If you're not familiar with blended learning, it is an opportunity where students still take a full, the full-on curriculum, but they don't meet in the classroom every single day. And so we meet any, about once a week, and I have some of your students in class. And we meet about once a week, once every other week, depending on what the demand is. And we cover the curriculum online, 
but the difference is with the blended format, I'm available for the students to meet their needs every day. So they have a lab that's available for them to come into every day. They can ask questions of me and interact with me every day. Um, the, one, the parents always say that, um, often say that students, every student should have to take a class like this prior to leaving Midland Public Schools. It really prepares them for um, life beyond the high school and spe um, specifically for college because I'm not there every day saying, don't forget, we have class today. Um, it's kind of ran like a college class where I give them the syllabus and all the, the expectations are laid out ahead of time. So, you know, we get, we get kudos for our program. And like I said, this is the, the best part of teaching. Here in the feedback. Yep. What questions do you have for Andrea about kind of the out-of-class opportunities and things students earn through CTE? Okay. All right. Thank All you, right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so we covered a lot, you know, but I, of course I wanted to give you an opportunity not only to learn about the collaboration within our county, which has provided more opportunities for our students and students from other schools to experience our programs, but just to give you an idea, a real in-depth idea of what CTE is all about, because it's not, it, it, it certainly is what happens in the auto tech lab or the, with accounting or with engineering or with business or fill in the blank, all the different areas. But it's also students collaborating with each other, applying those skills, you know, building a house, uh, you know, working on a car, working at the hospital, uh, working in a, a, a greenhouse three days a week, you know, doing a study with Michigan State professors, all those different kind of things are part of it as well. Any questions at all about CTE? Yes. How is are these programs marketed to students? Yeah. Like so, how like how do they learn that these types sure. of things are available to so them? The question is how are how are the programs marketed to students? And really, uh, we are, all of our counselors are aware of the program certainly, and they're in our our course offering guide. Um, and then I think that you know we we try to allow we try to treat everybody the same as far as all of our courses go because we don't want to be viewed as advantaging or disadvantaging a particular course sequence uh, and then everybody would tell us well you just love Andrea's classes you know you don't push something else so we kind of allow it to happen organically but certainly uh, the teachers are very aware too so like in our healthcare tech sequence if you have students that are really interested in science and biological sciences um, the teachers will talk with them about healthcare tech as well you know it's not just the Talk about other classes. we do take them around to the other county that's true. So uh, every year we have a, um, usually end of January, beginning of February, we have a, an opportunity for our students to sign up. We advertise it at both high schools. That's a great example. I don't know why you think of that. Um, and the, we, we allow them to sign up for the chance to go visit a program at another school. So if a Midland High kid wants to come over here and see Auto Tech, if a Dow High kid wants to go to Willow Creek and see Educational Careers, or Coleman and see AgriScience, or somebody wants to go to GMCA, and we provide the transportation to get them out, take a look at it, uh, since they don't get to see it in their building every day. And maybe, maybe they can't talk to somebody, their friend who's in the class, so they can actually go visit it. We also send our teachers around um, every late winter, early spring, as people are signing up for classes, we'll send teachers out to the various high schools to talk about the program. So Lance will go out, Andrea will go out, Aaron will go out, and to the other high schools, and then, uh, Teachers from those high schools will come to us too to talk about, just to be available at lunchtime, talk to the kids about the classes. Um, and then the other way is uh, we just finished up our uh, career, um, career days for 10th graders, and many of these programs uh, presented those career days as well. Um, so the students have a chance to see that also. What else? Yeah. yeah. No, you go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how, how is uh, your health health services or whatever different than Meridian's? Sure, so our healthcare tech program, uh, you know, the, uh, there actually are some similarities. Uh, our well, well, I think Meridian start, came from ours, but our offshoot of. So, yeah, so we, our program starts with the healthcare tech one class um, and students take human body systems, used to be anatomy and physiology. Human body systems is one of our new classes this year. Um, so they take those two classes by the end of their junior year if they want to continue in the sequence Some students take it as a senior and then as a senior they can take healthcare tech 2 Which is where they actually go to Delta College two hours a day and work towards their CNA license And then they can work at the hospital uh, for three hours a day So those students will only be at their high school for their English class They go to Delta College two hours to the hospital for three hours. So that's our sequence 
uh, at Meridian, you know, has worked to, to build the number of CTA programs they have, and so they basically mirrored what we have uh, with that human body systems class. They, uh, at, at occasionally we'll have Meridian students that'll come here for healthcare tech, uh, and uh, occasionally we'll have students from Meridian that want to participate in the co-op program as well. Uh, more often it's Coleman and Bull Creek too, but we have had Meridian students as well. We offer, you know, 80, 85 percent of the programs in the county consortium, actually, because we're the largest portion of it, but um, certainly it's opened up a lot of opportunities for our kids. The ag science has been a big one that we, you know, didn't have, and that program got up and going. So. Yeah, it's great. So I'm an eighth grader, and, yep. I'm, and I'm trying to figure out, like, when I'm one that's seven years older, so when she changed for down high, it was a period of classes and you yeah. go to class. But between this and online learning and project mm -hmm. lead the way, and you know, I think it's a, a more of a broader question. How does she figure out her high school path? So that'd be a, that's a great question. Uh, so how do we help our seventh, eighth, and ninth grade students figure out what they want to take in high school? There's so many opportunities now, and and there's so many different paths that students can take that, that can be successful, right? So they're certainly going to be talking with the counselors towards the end of the year. We'll send the, the Dow High counselors will come down to Jefferson. The Middle High counselors will go to, to Northeast. And they'll talk with kids about their four-year plan. They'll have an educational development plan that they come up with now. They're eighth graders. So you know that may change, of course. But they at least lay out a potential path. And then they'll have the opportunity to talk with the counselors and teachers once they get to the high schools as well. Really, what I've noticed as, as a person in the community and in the schools and now as a parent as well, you know, the ninth grade is pretty straightforward. I mean, you can take your core four academics. Um, you, many students are involved in language or music. And then there's also the PE and, and health sequence. Between those things, that's most students' ninth grade year. Uh, sometimes students will do something beyond that as well. Um, but the ninth grade is usually pretty straightforward. It's after that that you get a lot more choices that come in. So I would just be talking with your student about what the different options are. The secondary course offering guide, or the SCOG, yes, as we call it, is online. So if you go to the parent section of the district website or you go to the curriculum section, you can find the secondary course offering guide. At the beginning of that, the first 20 pages or so shows you the different course pathways in each of the areas. And then later in that guide, which is like, I think it's almost 90 pages long, but there's a description for every class that we offer. Um, and then there's also contact information for people in each of the sequences. So Scott, talk about in the EVP that there's an interest and aptitude survey, I think all the kids take this off. Yeah, so you know, through career cruising and then through the EDP development process, students will actually take a survey and then it'll spit out, you know, here's things that you heard you should be interested in uh, based on your answers. You know, and then they can they turn right from that into looking at classes that they want to sign up for. So we have a couple places that we intersect with them. We do that during the eighth grade year. Uh, in the 10th grade year, we have those career days at both schools where they can visit and see different things in their school gyms. They can visit with people in different areas. Um, but that conversation really needs to start, you know, really in the eighth grade at home. Well, what kind of things do you think you might want to look at? You know, what I've noticed too, with both of my students, I have a college, junior, uh, college sophomore and a high school sophomore, and they've each changed their mind, of course, in high school about what they wanted to focus on. But but we were able to have a conversation about what are you interested in and that can make some choices. What I've noticed that's changing very quickly is it used to be if you wanted to take seven hours, it was just kind of for the academic high flyers who are trying to cram a whole bunch of extra credits into their high school experience. We still have kids that are doing that for that reason, of course. But we have a, a more and more students that are open to the idea of taking seven hours as opposed to the regular six hour day. So they can get that one extra class or one extra semester in. So they can, so they can take art and music, or they can take auto tech and engineering, or whatever it might be. You know, they want to combine and do multiple things. Or maybe they decided, as a 10th grader, they want to add a whole new sequence. They can still do that. The other thing we have more and more students doing is taking advantage of online classes. So they'll take six hours in a traditional school day, and then take one more class. And we have a lot of students that are taking their health class that way. They're taking even some of their core four classes, a history class or an English class that way to free up so they can go co-op, because the co-op is three hours a day. It's a big chunk of your senior year, right? So uh, they're taking online classes to free up room in their schedule to do other things. We see more and more students do that. At one point, online was, believe it or not, we only allowed students that were either failing to take online classes to make up for credit, or students that exhausted all the classes we have in a certain sequence to go beyond. Uh, now we offer a, a, a lot more opportunities for students online to give them flexibility in their schedule. 
that's a real powerful tool for kids too. Now, I say all that, and what I've noticed is seven hours is tough. It's not for the faint of heart. You know, even if it's an online class or whether it's seven hours in class every day, uh, that's going to be a busy kid, um, and they need to be a self-motivated kid. You know, to do that let's, let's let them go, and we'll stay yeah. for questions. Um, the December meeting is at Adams, so we're going to take you out to a building again, and that we're going to show you. Correct, Adams. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And we're going to show you um, two of our world language options that um, we are doing in the elementary. Where it's, one is uh, the Pure Mandarin, and the other one is the four world cultures that we're uh, exploring with the kids. So. Okay. If you have further questions for me, I'll stick around. But I also left business cards back there too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.